In the next few lessons, we will take a more comprehensive look at brush selection in Corel Painter. We're going to be experimenting with a lot of different brushes. So let's open the full view brush selector. You can access that from the window menu, or you can use the custom shortcut button in my workspace. Next, I'll open the advanced brush controls and show the general panel. These panels are going to be very helpful to surface the relevant controls for each brush type. Before we dive into the various brush categories, I'd like to try to organize things a bit to make it easier to explain how these brushes work. In Painter 2022, there is one massive brush library with so many categories it will make your head spin. My head is spinning just thinking about how long this section is going to be. Due to time constraints, I'm not going to go through every one of these brush variants, but you can experiment with them on your own time. Rather than thinking of painters' brushes in terms of brush categories, it's better to think of the brushes in terms of their underlying technology. As we will learn in later lessons, brushes are nothing more than combinations of various brush technologies and properties. So it may simplify things a bit if we group some of the similar brush categories together as we explore what their underlying technologies can do. For example, let's start with some brushes that add opaque paint, such as those found in the acrylics category. I'll choose a blue color to paint with, then I'll paint a test stroke with long flat. And you can see it's a bristly looking brush. If you look in the general panel, you can see that this is a camel hair dab type, which creates a series of continuous lines that give the illusion of bristles. The method and the subcategory are set to legacy cover, soft cover, and that controls the paint that comes out of that brush when you paint with it. If I change to the gel wash brush, you can see it's a static bristle dab type, which looks a little different, but it's still using a cover method. This time it's enhanced cover, greeny soft alpha blend. If I paint with this brush, it looks somewhat similar to the previous variant, but it's less opaque and the bristles are spaced differently. In this case, the two brushes are using the same fundamental brush technology, cover, but with slightly different brush properties and shapes. I'll return to the long flat brush. Whether it's legacy cover or enhanced cover, both methods are creating paint that is opaque and covers underlying layers. You can make strokes that are semi-opaque, but it's different from a transparent medium like watercolor, which tints underlying layers. For the most part, brushes that are categorized together aren't going to be drastically different from each other, but there are some exceptions depending on the category. If you look at the dab and stroke previews in the full view brush selector, you can get a feel for what the characteristics are of the brushes in this category. Many of the brushes are bristly looking. Some of the brushes are opaque and others are semi-opaque. That's what you would expect to get if you were working with acrylics but it doesn't mean that you have to create acrylic paintings with these brushes. Depending on how you use the brush, it might look like gouache or oil. If the brush is thin enough, it might even look like a pen or pencil. So the names of the brushes only mean so much. Rather than paying too much attention to the category of brushes you're painting with, just try to find brushes that can achieve the look you want. I'll choose opaque detail, and to me, this brush looks like it would be good for painting branches or cracks. There's nothing about the look of this brush that says it's an acrylic brush, so I'll disregard that suggestion that this is an acrylic brush and just use it however I like. If I switch to the gouache category, you can see that these are bristly brushes that also use the cover method. The look you get from these brushes is quite similar to that of acrylics, but the behavior of the paint is a bit different. Some experience with the traditional forms of acrylic and gouache is required to feel the difference but it mostly comes down to how the paint blends or covers underlying paint and the appearance of the strokes. If I paint into a solid color with brushes from each category, you can see that gouache tends to be more opaque, while acrylic tends to be wetter and more semi-opaque. The next brush category we will explore is oils general. Oils are very similar to acrylics and gouache. They are mostly bristly looking brushes that use a drip or cover method. Let's start with hard bristle. You can see this is a bristle spray brush with a shape that's not that much different from one of the acrylic brushes we looked at earlier. The main difference is the behavior of the paint, which looks oily along the edges. The brush smudges underlying paint more heavily, and there is a stronger mixture of color. Compared to the wet thick brush from the acrylics category, you can see the difference is subtle at times. You may use the brushes found in oils, acrylics, or gouache interchangeably if you like, since they are so similar to each other. This is why previous versions of Painter had acrylics, oil, and gouache grouped together. 
but now they are separate so that you can narrow down the exact brush behavior you want. I'll select the Impressionist Detail Brush in General Oils, and you can see that it's a lot wetter looking. This brush is using the drip method to create an oily effect. Like Cover, drip is an opaque paint, but it has a wetter feel to it. Let's move on down to the category called Sargent, and we'll try the Simple variant. Sargent is a category of brushes that are based off of the artists with the same name. These are mostly wet, oily brushes that smudge the paint around using the drip method. Sargent is meant to emulate a wet-on-wet -wet oil painting technique, so the strokes really smudge the underlying paint around. The brushes in this category are exclusively wet, unlike the general oils category, which is a mixture of cover and drip. Sargent brushes can blend to transparency when used on a separate layer, so long as improved layer support is selected in the properties bar. If this is disabled, these brushes will not work on a layer. Let's select the Sargent brush. This variant is using the plug-in method along with the liquid brush subcategory. You can see the results look very similar to the drip-based variant we were just using. We'll learn more about the differences between drip and liquid brushes later in this course. The next category we'll look at is Oils Artists. Artists Oils is yet another oil paint category in Painter. These brushes use the Artists Oils dab type, which emulates more of the properties of traditional oil painting, such as brush loading and paint viscosity. Let's start with Paint and Blend. I'll create a test stroke, and you can see that the brush eventually runs out of paint. If I change to a different color and paint an overlapping stroke, you can see that if I keep brushing after the paint has run out, I'm able to blend naturally like I would with a traditional brush to create organic looking mixtures of color. While this is meant to give the feeling of painting traditionally, if you don't enjoy the frustration of running out of paint, you can use the Artist Oils panel in the Advanced Brush Controls to lower the viscosity property. That sets the rate at which the brush runs out of paint. So if we set that much lower, then we're going to be able to paint for a lot longer before the paint runs out. If you want your paint to look thicker, you can use the Impasto flyout in the Properties bar to enable paint with depth. Let's select Knife Blender. This is a blender, so all it's going to do is push and smudge around the underlying paint. If you look carefully, you may notice that while the brush is pushing the pigment around, the thickness of the paint has stayed in place. That's because we applied some impasto or paint depth with the previous brush. The impasto is on its own special layer and can only be manipulated with impasto enabled brushes. If I enable paint with depth, then I can smudge the impasto as well. Just keep that in mind when using these brushes. If you want, you can go to Canvas, Clear Impasto, and that will clear the impasto from the canvas, but that may not be the effect that you want. We'll be exploring how to use impasto in more detail in a later lesson. Let's try a grainy blender. This blender can use the paper grain to add texture to the stroke. I'll change to a canvas texture, which helps these brushes look more natural when you're painting and blending. There are lots of different canvases you can choose from, and you can change the scale of the texture to make it larger or smaller if you like. Let's switch to Broad Clumpy. If you look in the general panel, the dab type for this brush is Artist Oils Camel Hair. This dab type has similar characteristics to the regular Artist Oils. The paint runs out, and it can only blend Artist Oils paint on the same layer. But instead of a solid dab, this dab type creates individual bristles. There is a third Artist Oils dab type called Flat, but we'll be coming back to these later when we discuss dab types in more detail. This brush also utilizes the Real Bristle properties. If you ever see Real in the name of a brush, it's using the Real Bristle properties, which you can access in the Advanced Brush Controls. Real Bristle can be added to Camel Hair, which gives you bristles that can be made to look more natural with additional Real Bristle properties. Compared to some of those bristle brushes I was using in the acrylics, gouache, or general oils category, the Artist Oils bristles move more naturally and look more organic. You can also modify the opacity controls of the Artist Oils brushes to change the thickness of the paint. Lowering the opacity creates a thinner, drier looking paint that is less opaque and takes longer to cover. Increasing the opacity gives you thicker, wetter paint that covers easily. Oils Bravura is the newest category of oil brushes. While acrylics, oils, and sergeant brushes can utilize a variety of technologies like bristles, drip, and impasto, Bravura oils are meant to emulate the basic look of oils while being as simple to use as possible. 
you need not use any special layers or tinker with brush properties. Bravura oils can create strokes with an oily appearance, but they are using the brush loading technique instead of the drip method. These brushes work well for creating simple strokes with a lot of character. There is one final oil brush technology called Oils Real Wet, but we will explore that separately since it's a wet medium. You might also be able to classify thick paint, impasto, and many other types of brushes as having an oily or acrylic appearance, but I won't include those in this grouping since they are based on different brush technologies.